Kenny here in the St. John Clark Pain Treatment Center, and today I wanted to cover the topic of sciatica. What it is, what it isn't, what are some things that could be exacerbating this condition, and how neurosomatic therapy treats sciatica. So sciatica actually refers to an impingement of the sciatic nerve, and the sciatic nerve is a bundle of nerves that leaves both the lumbar and the sacral area. Now that bundle of nerves actually creates a sciatic nerve. And so any pressure or impingement or irritation of that nerve root or the bundles are gonna refer to that pain symptom quality of sciatica. Now, because sciatica is a collection of symptoms, it means that there's different levels and different areas that could be affecting the actual sciatic nerve. Because of where the nerve roots exit, if there's a change in the lumbar spine or in the sacrum, or even in the muscles that actually connect to uh, the deep hip here, as the nerve root passes and as the actual nerve branch passes through those structures, any change in those structures can lead to an impingement of the sciatic nerve, leading to sciatica. And so we start with a postural assessment. We go through, we look at your history, we look at your symptoms, and together that gives us a clear picture of what you're dealing with. And so if we find a compression, if we find a tilt in the pelvis, that could be potentially creating some narrowing of where the nerve roots exit, that's also called stenosis. If you have a diagnosis of a spondylolisthesis, which is where one of the vertebrae shifts uh, over the other, then that can lead to some compression of the nerve roots. Also a, a bulging disc or a herniated disc there, if you see, and I'll post the picture here, but if you see that the bulging disc is gonna, incl is gonna create some pressure in that nerve root as it exits there. So there's several points of impingement that we can find and identifying that point is gonna really bring you the most relief. If it's in the actual muscular tissue, right? People usually understand that piriformis kind of correlates with sciatic nerve pain. And so a lot of people will be stretching piriformis because there's a potential impingement point there as that nerve um, exits and actually goes through the musculature. And so if you find that you're constantly having to do piriformis stretches and you're getting relief, but it's not long lasting relief, then we wanna find what's actually causing that piriformis muscle to stay tight, right? Is there a tilt in the, in the pelvis? Is there some, some external rotation that's happening that's really shortening that piriformis muscle? These are all things that we account for. These are all things that we look for. And these are all things that we treat, really giving you long lasting relief of this pain. If there's a structural imbalance, we correct those as well. And so because we understand that the structure, that the muscular imbalances and postural distortions are gonna create these forces, these torque forces, these rotational forces, these shearing forces, all of those forces can lead to the clamping down of the sciatic nerve, really affecting and causing that pain. And at times that pain can be debilitating, especially in movement. If you find that you can't bend over without fear, that that's gonna cause a, a flare up or a, a shooting pain down your leg, then it's gonna limit your quality of life. It's gonna limit your mobility. So really, really crucial for you to understand what sciatic nerve is, what it isn't, if it's a trigger point, that's gonna be treated separately, and what are some things you know that exacerbate it. Now for everybody's different, because of the different impingement points, you're gonna find that different things are gonna cause a flare up, right? Some people standing for too long, it feels like, oh wow, I start really getting sciatic nerve pain, or we'll say sciatica. Or maybe it's sitting, being in a seated position can create a lot of force and a lot of pressure um, in the lumbar, right? And so if you're seated at work for long periods of time and you find that standing, wow, causes a lot of pain down the leg, on the side of the leg, those things can be coming from a, a pressure, a compression of that nerve root in the lumbar spine or something happening in the sacrum. Again, there's different points and so that's why it's crucial to find someone who can analyze your structure, who can look at your symptoms, who can really put those things together and say, this is the source of your pain and we're gonna treat this and we're gonna keep it gone, right? Because that's the ultimate goal for us is to restore function to the body, restore balance to the structure, therefore restoring function to the body itself. We do treat trigger points as well because we often find that it may not even be an impingement of sciatic nerve, that it could be a referral from another muscle group that kind of mimics that same pattern of sciatic nerve impingement. And here's a picture of what that looks like with the trigger point charts. You see that there, even in some, some places in the hamstrings, 
that could feel like, wow, I'm really getting some of that pain. So in that case, it wouldn't necessarily be actual sciatica. And that's what we like to kind of cover both between what sciatica is and what sciatica isn't. There are pain patterns, specifically trigger point pain patterns, that can mimic sciatica pain. And so really understand what the source of your pain is, is gonna give you the best possible outcome as far as long lasting relief. Now I'm gonna list some published research in the description Kind of going over some of the things that I'm covering today. Again, if you find that you really have not gotten full long-term relief of this kind of pain, come see us. We'd love to help you out. We'd love to restore your function, restore you to balance, and help you live your best life. Give us a call at 727-347-HEAL. That's H-E-A-L. Thanks again, and remember that education leads to empowerment.